CNN thinks they are being attacked because President Trump refuses to go to the White House Correspondents' Dinner. I'm not making this up. Brian Stelter from CNN actually said it was an attack on the press that the president was holding a rally instead of going to a fancy D.C. party this weekend. Take a look at this. You know, say what you will about the press. This is an event that honors the First Amendment. Yes, that's what it's about. It's an awards dinner and a fundraiser. In the past, presidents have always shown up, uh, even if they were angry at the press at any given time. And importantly, it's, it's useful for White House aides to schmooze with reporters. Yeah. It's helpful for us to get to know our sources. There's some value in these sorts of festive events. But it is, as you said, another example of a tradition that's uh, at least being put on pause during the Trump age. Here's what the Correspondents Association says. They said, basically, they don't mind either way. This this event is going to be about celebrating journalists and celebrating the First Amendment, and so the show will go on. There's the statement uh, about this weekend's dinner and dinners in the future. But look, it's yet another example of, of what we're seeing. This administration's attack against the media it takes many forms. Yeah, it One does. form is the president having a rally uh, this Saturday instead of attending the dinner. Uh, and I do think it matters mostly because of uh, what it means about these tensions continuing to escalate. It makes, you, it makes you wonder, you know, there's been all this talk in the lower report about the president uh, making orders, making orders, and then being ignored. Yesterday, he told Caitlin Collins, nobody disobeys my orders. Right. And then what happens today? An order not to attend the dinner this weekend. Makes you wonder if that's... Well, you know your privilege when you think the president skipping your party is an attack against the media. Aren't we lucky to live in a nation where the press is not imprisoned, killed, hurt, or stifled for exercising our First Amendment right? Not all countries can say the same. Go to Turkey. Go to China, go to North Korea, go to Cuba, go to Venezuela. You want to know what it's like to be attacked for being a journalist? Go to a country where journalists are actually attacked for reporting the news or criticizing the government. There are over 500 journalists around the world who are in prison right now for reporting. The fact that the president of the United States dislikes CNN's reporting so much, and still all he does is call you fake news or tweet about you, you're still free to keep criticizing, keep saying what you want to say, keep calling him names, keep perpetuating fake news. You're free to keep telling your viewers conspiracy theories that aren't true. Dear God, aren't you lucky to live in a nation where you can exercise your First Amendment rights without fear of real government retaliation or real attacks, without fearing for your life or your freedom or your family or your livelihood or your safety? That proves that the First Amendment, the freedom of the press, is alive and well, as it should be, and the president respects that. And for that freedom of the press, we should all be thankful. Brian Stelter and CNN are a lot of things, but they are not under attack because the popular kid, the president of the United States, won't come to their party. And that is my final point.